Hi guys, welcome to this first video in chapter 3 on equilibrium of a particle. Um, just in order to, I guess, bring us into this chapter, I'd just like to quickly go back to um, chapter 2.4. If I can just find it quickly. Chapter 2.4, okay? Guys, I just want to ask you what... If I had to ask you what essentially was chapter 2 about, what was the entire chapter 2 about? I would hope, okay, I've just written down this equation here, which I'll get to in a moment. I would hope that you would realize that the, the, the basics behind chapter 2 was that we were looking for a resultant force, okay? We had a number of forces acting on an object or a particle and we were trying to find what is the resultant force. There were also other times when we were looking at trying to find the components of a force, yes, um, but the idea essentially was to find the resultant force. Either we did it in, um, in scalar form or we did it in vector form. We were either in two dimensions or three dimensions and um, we used the parallelogram method, we used the um, we use the method of adding a system of coplanar forces. Um, but this really governed chapter 2. This, this is one of the main ideas that you need to get uh, out of chapter 2 is the resultant force is equal to the sum of the forces. Okay? So now I just want you to have a look quickly at this. I'm just using this example. I thought it's, it might help explain... Um, explain what I'm trying to say. Um, here we see a, a, a link, okay, and we've got two forces, okay, you've all seen this before, and we have a force here of a, a 600 and a force there of 400, doesn't really matter about the details, we break it up into its x and y components, and there we see that equation again, resultant force is equal to the sum of the forces. This is in the x direction, and here we have in the y direction, resultant force is equal to the sum of the forces. And then we get a resultant in the x, and we get a resultant in the y, and then we, we, use, um, we, we calculate the magnitude in this way, and we get a number 629. Now, don't worry about any of the details, don't worry about the numbers. The important thing I want you to see is that essentially we were calculating a resultant force using this technique, but what you see here is that is that the resultant is not zero. Okay, well, I, I just want you to take note of that. I'm not sure if many of you noticed this all through chapter two, that often, most often, we were calculating resultant forces that were not zero. But then that should, you should ask the question, but if, if the resultant force is not zero, then why are we still in static equilibrium? Because isn't this chapter one, uh, sorry, this semester one, all about static equilibrium, essentially? Well, the answer is absolutely yes. We are in static equilibrium. But what do you notice here is that all we were doing is we were calculating resultant forces of, of F1 and F2, right, which gave us this. So, and, and there, there is our resultant force. There's the direction of that resultant force. There's the, we have a magnitude and we have a direction. Well, what, what isn't being told in chapter 2 is that often we, not often, perhaps every time, we actually have a reaction force that is, that is cancelling out. What we are not talking about, this is what I'm trying to say, what we are not highlighting so much in chapter 2 are forces that are reacting to these applied forces which essentially cancel these resultant forces out which cause the object that we're looking at, the object that we're studying, to be in equilibrium. So I hope that that makes sense. I mean, look at, look at this example here, fundamental problems on page 39, right? You learned how to calculate the resultant of these forces, these one, two, three forces, and I'm sure they did not end up at uh, zero. So if this object was, was to remain in equilibrium, then there had to be a, a reaction force countering 
these three forces in order to to maintain static equilibrium for the system. Okay, so I hope, I hope that's making sense now. Again, I just want to remind you, resultant force, this, the resultant force is equal to the sum of the forces. And so now, when we come to chapter, chapter 3, equilibrium of a particle, we are saying that the sum of the forces is equal to zero. So in, in, from chapter 3 onwards now, we are going to consider absolutely all the forces acting on a particle. Whereas examples like this, here in chapter 2.4, we were not considering absolutely all the forces acting on a particle. We were simply trying to, to practice, to learn how to calculate any arbitrary number of forces to calculate the resultant of, of a number of arbitrary forces. But we were not necessarily in chapter 2 considering equilibrium as a whole, whereas now we are going to look at all the forces acting on a particle. And so if we look at the sum of the forces here, that it should equal zero. So if we say the resultant force equals the sum of the forces equals zero. Okay. So, I thought perhaps that might just um, give you an, an entry into this uh, chapter because I, I, I like to maintain um, consistency and I like, to, I like to link the previous concepts to the current concepts. Okay, thank you.